What is good, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I am starting my updated top 10 rankings list for all the positions in Diamond Dynasty. Been about a month since I've done this. My opinions have changed on a few cards. So I wanted to remake these. Probably the last time I do this for MLB The Show 21. But you never know. Maybe I'll do it one more time before MLB The Show 22. But speaking of MLB The Show 22, probably coming out in the next three months. Once that game comes out, we're going to be grinding more than we already are for MLB The Show 21. This is going to be the go-to channel for all MLB MLB The Show 22 content, and I do have a ton more MLB The Show 21 content coming for the remainder of the year. So if you're excited for this one, do me a favor, hit that like button. Can we get 100 likes on this video? And subscribe to the channel if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it. Trying to hit 7,000 subscribers. Very, very close, but without further ado, hope you all enjoy the video, and let's get it. Minika, watch me on Twitch. Ooh, I'm streaming. I'm on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Red button beaming. Let's get that sub count. Take over YouTube. Ooh, we teaming. My content so high. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Red button beaming. Okay, everyone, so we are here back on MLB The Show 21 Diamond Dynasty, probably with my final rankings of the year. Maybe I'll do one or two more, depending on if we get some new cards or how I'm feeling about these cards going later on into the year. But with MLB The Show 22 probably coming out in the next three months or so, this might be the last one for MLB The Show 21. But like I said in the intro, once MLB The Show 22 comes out, we're going to be doing rankings. We're going to be doing every single video you can think of. I have so many video ideas planned for MLB The Show 22. We're really going to blow up when that game comes out. This is going to be the go-to YouTube channel for MLB The Show 22 stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. But today we're talking top 10 shortstops. Now there's going to be a couple of cards that I'm not going to talk about on this list that are not primary shortstops that I won't be ranking in this video because they're going to be in a couple other videos. Those are guys like Cattell Marte. We have the 99 Trey Turner. I think I'm going to save Marte for the second baseman's video. Rather the shortstops one. I think I'm going to save Trey Turner for the third baseman one and the second baseman one because I don't see a lot of people using him at shortstop now i don't use Corey seager at shortstop the postseason one but we are going to rank him because he's primary shortstop that's the only reason but a lot of people including myself if they do use this Corey seager on their team he's either at second base or third base not a lot of people play him at shortstop for his lack of defense these are just my opinion though like my other videos so if you agree or disagree with me that is completely okay but let's get into it to get our top 10 list started at number 10 we have the 99 milestone cal ripkin jr and once again if you guys are watching on tiktok come over to the YouTube channel for the full rankings. Those are going to be out today on the YouTube channel. But Cal Ripken Jr. was a little bit of a disappointment because we waited until December to get this card. And for a December card, he's not really great. He doesn't really stand out to you anywhere. He is a very good fielder, but at the plate, he has mediocre contact and power for this point in the year and doesn't have the best speed for the shortstop position. But if you just take a look at him as a car compared to the other shortstops, he's definitely not a bad shortstop. And I definitely think he makes the top 10 at number 10 because like I said, all around, he's pretty good. He's not great anywhere besides the field, but he does have excellent fielding stats for the most part in the 90s all across the board. Contact is okay. Power is pretty solid. It's not great. It's kind of comparable to Lindor, Wander Franco, Honus Wagner, guys at the end of this top 10 list. So that's not bad. This Cal Ripken Jr. actually very surprising in game. Actually plays a little bit above the stats, so I definitely think he deserves a spot on the top 10. If you want to pick him up, though, don't think he's worth the price point of 500k, but you can also get him in the event. So I just mentioned Honus Wagner, and at number 9, we have Honus Wagner for the 9 best shortstop in the game. Now, I know some people love Honus Wagner. He might be a top three shortstop in your eyes. He's not in mind. On paper, he looks great, but the power is lacking in my opinion. This card swings a dead bat. He has 91 power against righties, 92 against lefties, and like I said with Ripken, it's not bad, but Honus Wagner plays below the stats at the plate in my opinion, at least power-wise. Contact-wise, he's pretty good. Does get a lot of base hits, but power-wise, in my opinion, this card just swings a dead bat. Can get you base hits, but not a lot of home runs. But at this point in the Year, I want a shortstop that can do it all the plate, and I don't think Honus Wagner can do that defensively and on the base pads, though. He is great for the most part. The fielding that's high 80s, low 90s, and the speed 97 and 99 steel. You get into parallel four, that's 99 speed, 99 steel, and 99 bag aggressiveness. Like I said, there's gonna be some people that disagree with this one. People love Honus Wagner. I'm not one of them. If you want to pick him up, he's in the NL Central team of Finney, season four. At number eight, we have the 99 Wander Franco card. Now, this card has been the game for a long time now. I think it was like the fifth inning balls, fourth or fifth inning 
being one of the first 99 overall cards in the game and he's still a very solid card at this point in the year one he's a switch hitting bat love to get switch hitters in your lineup decent enough contact for higher difficulties hall of fame and legend pretty solid swing but again feel like he swings a little bit of a dead bat not the best power in the game but can give you base hits very solid in the field 89 fielding 94 arm 92 arm accuracy 88 reaction time and then 86 speed 66 steel he gets it done all across the board besides the power but i do like him at the plate more than honus wagner that's going to put wander at number eight and honus at number nine if you want to pick up wander he's also very cheap 100k on the market at number seven we have the 99 francisco lindor card my apologies for the last few cards i was blocking some of the stats should be good to go now raise my camera up a little bit and this lindor card is essentially wander franco they're very very similar but i like him better at the plate he has a better swing more power at the plate in my opinion better fielding stats not quite the arm that wander has and not quite the speed but they're very very close they want there's a little better contact wise as well but they're very very close but i'll take the guy with better power at this point in the year with better fielding better reaction time and that is lindor but they both play the same exact position shortstop second base third base like i said switch hitting bats both good swings good contact good power good fielder good speed this lindor card good across the board but wander is much cheaper 200,000 stubs cheaper so really i would go for wander over lindor on the marketplace but if you do have lindor definitely think he is better than wander but for the price point i'll take the budget at number six we have the 98 Trey turner from ta3 i said i'm not going to rank the 99 version in this video but the 98 version from the washington nationals in ta3 is a primary shortstop so he does qualify for for this rankings video and it's still a very good card at this point in the year this card might actually have more pop than the 99 version of trade Turner, but he does lack defensively compared to the 99 version this card at parallel four has mid 70 fielding stats would like to see that a lot higher for a shortstop i can never play this card even when he was on my main team it was the best shortstop in the game at shortstop i had to play him at second base because defensively he couldn't get it done at the shortstop position but at the plate he has great context stats for higher difficulties the pop at the plate is amazing he has 103 power against righties and 89 against lefties but he feels way better in game he plays way above the stats then they say on paper here for the power for this 98 Trey Turner and then obviously for both Trey Turner cards you're going to get great speed great steal great bag aggressiveness 99 speed 96 still if he had better defensive stats this card might be better than the 99 version but he doesn't the 99 is better but the 98 still very good if you want to pick him up he's in the nl east team affinity season three before i get into my top five short stops in the game right now if you're enjoying the video and you're finding you so do me a favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new i would greatly appreciate it in the comments down below let me know what do you think i got right so far what do you think i got wrong but let's get back into it to get my top five started at number five we have the 99 finest carlos Correa and number three number four and number five are very close together it can go a lot of ways with these three cards put them in any order you want this is the order i'm gonna put them in and we're getting started with carlos correa here reason why i think his swing is the worst of the three of the cards i'm gonna talk about number three number four and number five that's gonna lower him a little bit he's probably the best fielder between the three of them with 95 fielding 99 arm 99 arm accuracy and 99 reacts time at parallel four he has 99 fielding stats across the board he's also not very fast carlos correa only 61 speed for the shortstop position you want somebody a little bit faster than 61 speed definitely not bad at the plate don't get me wrong but he is the worst swing out of the three in my opinion you might like his swing more than the other two cars that i'm going to talk about and that's completely fine once again it's very very close carlos correa very budget friendly though being one of the finest cards get him now for 44k at number four i have the 99 finest brandon crawford card i'm gonna take this card over correa because he's a lefty bat that absolutely destroys right he's one of the best lefty swings in the entire game at the shortstop position insane power against righties not on paper but in game this card mashes righty arms 123 contact against righties 110 power against righties his lefty splits not bad either 105 contact against lefties 108 power against lefties definitely a very good fielder not as good as Correa, but very very good 99 fielding 99 reaction time 85 arm 91 arm accuracy but i can't put him at number three because the speed is too low only 38 speed for a shortstop not gonna get it done one of my favorite swings though at the position you can get him completely free in the nls team affinity season five at number three i have the 99 finest Bo Bichette. very close between these three cards i'll say that again Bo Bichette, though a little bit better contact wise than the other two cards so on hall of fame and legend gonna have a better pci size now i'm not sure whose swing i like more either crawford or Bichette. it's very close i might lean crawford a little bit because it's a lefty bat compared to Bo Bichette, who's a righty bat way better righty bats in the game than there are lefties so i might lean crawford there he's also solid in 
the field. Crawford and Correa are better, but Bichette is definitely not bad in the field. All 80s fielding stats across the board. 83 fielding, 80 arm, 87 arm accuracy, 86 reacts time. And he is the fastest of the three between Correa, Crawford, and himself. 74 speed, 80 steal, 91 bag aggressiveness. And as a finest card, he has 10 quirks. Crawford had 13. I forgot how many Correa had. So someone will have to check that for me. But he is the most budget friendly of the three as well. You can get Crawford for free in Team Infinity, but if you can't grind that, you can get Bichette for 35k. At number two, we have the 99 postseason Corey Seager. Now, this card on my main team, when I did use him, I used him at second base. Full disclosure there. He's not the best defensively at the shortstop position because of his arm. He's not bad. Fielding-wise, reacts time, arm accuracy are actually very good for the shortstop position. If this card had like an 85-plus arm, no problem using him at shortstop. But because he only has a 72 arm at parallel two, so at base, he's at a 70 arm, I really can't use him at shortstop. But I got to put him at number two because there might be no one better at the plate at the position than Corey Seager. Lefty bat, monster hitting numbers. 120 contest against righties. 122 against righties. 115 power against righties and 124 power against lefties. Now, number one might look better on paper than Corey Seager at the plate, but I'll honestly take Corey Seager over number one at the plate because his swing is better. He's a lefty, but just the fielding stats is going to hold him back from being number one on this list. Also, the speed as well. Only 49 speed for a shortstop. Too low for my liking, but this card's a monster at the plate. That's why he's at number two. If you want to get him, he's in the postseason collection. And last but not least, at number one, you guys knew who number one was going to be. I don't think it's a surprise here. A top three, top four car in the game. It's 99 Fernando Tati Jr. All across the board, this card is excellent. As the cover boy for MLB The Show 21, we knew he was going to get a juice card, and he absolutely did with Team Affinity Season 5. He has 125 power against righties and lefties. 114 contest against righties. 120 contest against lefties. Excellent fielding stats. 99 fielding. 99 arm. 99 arm accuracy with 99 speed. 98 still. There is nothing not to love about this Tatis card. Now, like I said with Seager, I do like his swing way more than Tatis as a lefty with a better swing. So that might be the only knock on Tatis. But he also has 16 quirks unbelievable this card top three top four in the game need to have them get them in the nos team affinity season five okay everyone that's gonna do it for the video today my updated top 10 shortstops in the game in the comments down below let me know did you agree or disagree with my list if you did disagree that is completely okay but if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful do me a favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new i would greatly appreciate it make sure to subscribe to the channel mlb the show 22 we are going to be grinding more than we already are for mlb the show 21 also have a lot of fun challenge videos coming out all MLB the show type of videos out with hitting a home run with trout in every single MLB the show game striking out a batter with the Grom in every single MLB the show game ton more MLB content coming to the channel so make sure to subscribe also follow me on my social links which are on the screen for you guys right now but that's gonna do for me today everyone see you on the next video have a great rest of your day peace out